Now I'm out at Tackle World Wagga tonight and Jamin Forbes and Marty Asmus are here from Narendra Fisheries. So I'm just going to go over and find them and we'll have a quick chat to them about how important their work is. We do a lot of um, basin-wide assessments, like general population monitoring, um, but specifically that I work on um, recreational fishing assessments across New South Wales. So we look at um, investigating size limits, so getting age and length of maturity for golden perch and Murray cod. Um, do a lot of assessment of stocking effectiveness. Um, a lot of fish have been stocked into the dams and rivers for decades and no real assessment of whether it works or not. We breed yeah. the fish, put the fish in the water, wave them goodbye with no idea whether that's effective or not. So, yeah. And it's really interesting in the rivers. As, um, over the last couple of years I've found out that um, in the rivers the stocking that's done there through dollar for dollar schemes um, and by the Narendra Fishery Centre and that sort of thing, it's between 7 and 15% in the Murray and the Murrumbidgee rivers yeah. um, of the amount of stocked fish in the population. So most of the fish in our rivers are actually wild fish. That's good. That's yeah. A good thing. Whereas in the dams it's different. Yeah. Um, up, so up in Copeton Dam, for example, it's about 94% of the Murray cod up there were actually stocked, stocked fish, which suggests that there's very limited natural recruitment. Yeah. Um, and so that, was, that, that research led to that particular empowerment having the closed season lifted on it. Yeah, right. So it's, it's really important the work that fisheries do to keep that fishery sustainable. Very much so, yeah. So if we stop stocking there, eventually those fish will grow old and die or they get caught out and that fishery will decline. So we continued stocking is important to support that, not so much in our rivers. We want the rivers to be the, the true wild fisheries, so yep. stocking's not as important. Um, in some places it can be. It depends on the fishery and where it is. Like there's some rivers that are in steep decline, yep. others that are going really well. Like the Murrumbidgee River near where we are here in the Riverina, fantastic. One of the best fisheries yeah. around. Um, whereas um, I think out along the Darling, in some places of the Darling, it's really been hit hard by a lack of water, yeah. and yeah, the population there's crashed. We found some work down on the Edward Warkill system at Janiloquin that um, you get a little, stocking can help a little bit, but most of the fish that repopulated that area after the Blackwater actually emigrated into there from other areas, with some of the golden perch in particular swimming from the lower Darling, all the way up through all the fishways, up into the Edward Warkill system. So they swam hundreds of kilometres to repopulate that area. Yeah, that's, that's so interesting to say, isn't it? We're piecing a lot of the, you know, the puzzle together. We yeah. don't know everything, but every little every year that goes past, you know, we find out a little bit extra, and that's sort of helping us to understand where the fish come from and why we need to protect certain areas and other areas that are very healthy and that sort of thing. The main focus of a lot of our work is, uh, is basin wine surveys. Um, so we work uh, in the, the whole Murray-Darling Basin. We do stuff you know, west of the divide and east of the divide as well. Um, and so we've done that for you know, 30 years. So you know, we need to go back to the same sites, fish the same way, um, and then we build up a really good temporal picture, so a long-term picture of, of you know, how the fish are going across the whole basin. Um, the idea is that you, you build up that picture over a certain amount of time. Yeah. Um, the cod, for example, from you know, the mid 90s to 2011, their abundance has gone up by 700 odd percent. And that's great. And that's fantastic. Um, but if you don't go out and, as I said, fish the same way, so you, you know, it's all standardised, unless yeah. you're going out doing that every year or every few years, um, you don't get that picture over over those years. You get little snapshots, yeah. but, but you need to get the big picture. So that results because of fisheries and sustainable fishing? Oh, everything, yeah. So there's, there's a whole host of things in there. Um, certainly, you know, fishing practices have come, you know, far and yeah. in leaps and bounds. So regulations make a big difference. Um, and we try and, you know, we, we try and make that biological and so it's relevant to the fish. So those regs are there, you know, for a scientific reason. Yeah. Um, but look, water management's getting much better. Yeah. Um, we're trying to reverse a lot of those things that a hundred years ago, you know, caused the declines like river regulation and, yeah. uh, and weirs and, and all those sort of things, cold water pollution. You know, we're, we're slowly chipping it at uh, restoring back to a natural sort of flow regime and it's working. And that's what the fishery needs, doesn't it? And that's what it needs. So, you know, we need to be able to breed those fish naturally, um, not rely on, you know, stocking yeah. everywhere, those sort of things. So they're the little things that we have to learn. <laughs>